Hello! Welcome to Commissioner Carr. I'm Dustin Zarney, Democratic Elections Commissioner for Onondaga County. Today is Tuesday, October 11th, and uh, it is registration week. Uh, this is the big week, the final week for registration in New York for the November 8th general election. I'll go over all the uh, ways to register to vote uh, and all the different deadlines this week which kind of bleeds into Monday as well. <laughs> so, but, uh, but the big deadline is October 14th. That is the voter registration deadline for new voters in New York. If you have not registered before in New York, then you must register to vote October 14th. Uh, and there's several ways to do that. Uh, the first, and of course, uh, easy, not easiest way, but the first, uh, way to make sure your ballot is counted or your registration is counted uh, is to go in person to any of your county boards of elections and fill out a form at the counter and turn that in. Most county boards of elections, Onondaga County is open 8.30 to 4.30 all week. We will be open till 5 o'clock on uh, the 14th because it's a deadline day. Uh, and uh, you can come in in person. You can change your address. You can change your party. And you can also uh, um, uh, you, uh, you can also register for the first time as well. So October 14th is a big deadline. If you want to do this online, which is the easiest way to do it, you have to have a My DMV account. That's the Department of Motor Vehicles online system. Uh, is the only way to register to vote online. Uh, if you do have a My DMV account, you can do that. You can do a change, a party change, or register for the first time, but you have to do it by October 13th. That's Thursday, the 13th. The reason you have to do it then is because those registration forms then have to be delivered to the Board of Elections, and they're delivered on the 14th, which is the next day. So you have to do that by midnight on Thursday, October 13th. And then, of course, you can, you know, you, you can do registration forms that are at, and mail it in. You can go to our website on vote.net and print off a form and mail that in. And it has to be postmarked by October 14th and then received by October 19th. Uh, so those are your three ways to register to vote. Now, let's say you're already registered. And, uh, but you've moved. You actually have a little bit more time. You have until October 19th to, uh, to get, get your registration in, uh, and have your address changed. But it has to be received by October 19th. No longer postmarked. No longer, uh, uh, you know, you, that is no longer available. So again, you can do it through my DMV. You can do it at our counter or you can mail it in, but it has to be in our hands, physically in our hands. And we are not responsible for the slowness of the mail by October 19th. Now, let's say you miss that deadline. Uh, but you are, if you are not registered to vote and you miss the October 14th deadline, you would have to get a court order. Those are judges will be available during early voting days and during, um, election day and you could go in front of a judge tell them why you didn't uh, register in time and maybe they might allow you to get registered however if you live in new york and you're already registered in new york but missed the deadline to move your ballot whether it's from new york city or just over the line or you know even moving inside your own county to different polling places you actually can do that by affidavit ballot at the polls on election day at any of our early voting centers during early voting or on election day where you can update your voter registration. If you go to the new polling place or again during early voting, any of our early votings, and that is how you do it. But the best way to do that is get that done today. Uh, go to onvote.net. There's a link there that will take you to the My DMV if you have a My DMV account. You can print off a form and mail that in, 
or you can come down to our board of elections. Now, what if you don't know whether your board of elect, whether your registration is up to date? Well, again, go to onvote.net and right at the top uh, left hand corner, there's a, an option to check your voter registration. You can enter in all your information and see if you're registered and where you're registered in New York state. So that is important. Check that first because you don't want to do a form if you're already all set. You don't want to give us extra work. So check that form first just to make sure that you're properly registered. And by the way, this is a perfect opportunity to change your party if you want to change your party as well. You have until February 14th to do that for next year's primaries. But you might want to check it right now and get that all done. Uh, and also, while we're talking about it, let's talk about absentee ballots. Um, and I'll go over the deadlines for absentee ballots uh, next week. I will really go over it because it'll be, uh, you know, by next week's submission card, we'll be getting on to that two-week deadline. But, uh, you know, uh, you have until October, uh, um, you, two weeks before Election Day to mail in or uh, apply online for an absentee ballot. You can go to onvote.net. It's actually 15 days before Election Day to do that. So that's going to be October, I believe it's uh, the 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 24th. Uh, so October 24th, you have until, um, uh, you know, uh, to actually uh, apply for an absentee ballot. Now, I know a lot of people might be wondering what's going on with the lawsuit. Uh, uh, the, the state GOP has taken against absentees. Well, quite frankly, we don't know uh, because there is a hearing tomorrow. And we don't know at that hearing whether it's going to be all decided tomorrow or partially decided. And whatever it's going to be decided, it'll go to appeal. As of today, as of the moment of taping this lawsuit or taping this uh, commissioner and car, which is 505 on Tuesday, October 11th, all absentee balloting is being processed as normal. We've had over 2000 absentee ballots already received at the Onondaga County Board of Elections. They've all been canvassed, opened and um, and 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 put aside like we've done for the two primaries. The COVID excuse is still valid. Pre, pre-filled out absentee ballot applications are still valid. These are all things that were legal uh, and are legal today. I don't know what the judge is going to do tomorrow. Uh, I feel confident that no matter what is uh, decided, is going to go to appeal uh, to the appellate division. I believe it's very... Uh, the papers that the, the opposition, the GOP has put in, have been pretty suspect and full of logical holes. Uh, I think that the Democrats on the state board and as well as the New York Civil Liberties Union that ha- are are trying to intervene in the case have put forward some very solid arguments that not only is this action too late, but uh, improper even if it wasn't. So I'm, um, I, I feel like the voters are being heard on this. But... You know, the GOP has uh, chosen to file this lawsuit, and you have to think that they believe they have a reason why they're doing it and while they're doing it uh, uh, today Um, So, uh, in this county. So we'll have to see what happens there. Uh, Obviously, check my feeds. As soon as I know something, you're going to know something. Um, I, you know, I will release a, a Zoom with Zarni on Thursday. I may have an update for you then, um, or it may be next Tuesday, or I may do an, an emergency, uh, a podcast if I feel it's warranted, or at least I'll be posting on my Facebook page, uh, or in Twitter account, of course. So check all that out. But as of right now, absentee balloting is ongoing. You have until October 24th to apply. You have until November 8th to mail it back or drop it off at the Board of Elections. And it must be postmarked on November 8th. Uh, So that is what's going on right now. I see a couple of comments in the chat. David asked, uh, can I comment on the recent notice of claim of lawsuit delivered to the BOE regarding the 2020 election? Well, I did a nice long comment this weekend. I got a little annoyed 
Uh, and I woke up on Saturday and decided to uh, put a, a little missive out. So go back and check that out on my Facebook or Twitter feeds. But in short, what I will say is this is um, the same claims that they made last summer, this New York Citizens audit. Uh, the same baseless claims. Uh, they still will not give any specifics to back up their claims other than making the claims themselves. Uh, they, uh, in fact, and on, on, on claims that they've made, um, that have already been debunked, they're making them again, such as the 1850, uh, uh, birth dates, uh, that are out there because those are the registrations that happened before 1970 something that you were not required to give your birth date only the year you were born. And when we moved over to the digitized system, they chose, uh, to just, uh, uh, give the 1850 birth date to all of these voter registrations. Um, so that, that is, uh, one example of, of where they don't know. Now it is a notice of claim, so it's not an actual lawsuit. Um, it looks like a lawsuit. <laughs> it looks like the papers of a lawsuit, but where it's, where it's lacking is that it hasn't actually been filed in any court that we know of. We haven't actually been officially served. Uh, there's no order to show cause uh, where we would actually go to court to argue this. And the relief being sought is uh, to put aside the 2020 uh, elections in whole, which seems uh, impossible uh, two years later. Um, so that's really all I have to say about that. I will say that it's also part of a pattern of larger FOILs that have gone to our office, uh, freedom of information uh, law requests or FOIAs or FOILs. These, this has been nonstop and unending since uh, 2020. Um, they have uh, requested, uh, different people have requested different information, sometimes the same information multiple times, uh, to look for on fishing expeditions to look for voter fraud. It's important to note that they haven't found it <laughs> and they and that's because it doesn't exist uh not in the ways that they that, that they uh claim so that is uh uh yeah yeah and and this the last foil that we got um a foil that requested every voter registration form redacted for every voter in the county would be a million pages that we would have to produce so we are uh we are letting the law department deal with some of these foils, but some of these foils it's been taking up almost the equivalent of a full time uh position in our office to uh to respond to these foils. Mark Spanafor, my good friend, my commissioner uh, or my president and porch friend, uh talks about the the lawsuit on um or the, the, the redistricting in Rochester. Yeah, the redistricting in Rochester for the county ledge lines has gone crazy. Um, you have the Democratic uh, county executive that has vetoed lines that were passed by the Republican GOP, which is in the minority, with one or two Democrats that have that sided with the Republicans to pass a uh, a, a heavily gerrymandered uh, legislative lines. Uh, this is important to note that the Democrats actually have. A majority on the uh, Monroe County Legislature, uh, but one of the people sided with the Republicans um, and uh, to make herself president of the county legislature, and so she caucuses with them. Their own little IDC uh, scenario going on there. But it's not just Monroe County that is having issues. The city of Buffalo is having issues. The county of Ulster looks like it's having issues. The county of Broome is in court. Of course, you know that the county of Onondaga is in court as well. Anywhere where partisan politicians are enacting lines are more likely to have the, this vitriol uh, that is happening. And that is why I am so proud of the Syracuse uh, Independent Redistricting Commission. I'm proud of the maps I came up with. I'm proud of the Syracuse Common Council for voting for those maps. And it's uh, definitely telling people what is the proper way to do redistricting? And uh, that is uh, very important. Yes, and the former mayor of Rochester is behind, playing behind the scenes 
in the Monroe County Legislature. Again, another reason not to have politicians drawing lines, not to have political appointees drawing lines. Have citizens drawing lines that are drawn at random that want to do this work. That is the best way to get non-political lines. And that is what I will be fighting for for the next 10 years. (laughs) So um, that's my windmill to tip at. But as we're seeing, there's going to be a lot of lawsuits, um, and hopefully people will, um, uh, hopefully people will wake up uh, that there are better ways to do this, and and we can ma- pass some legislation to make that happen ten years from now. Joe Charles says in the chat, "I hope that the GOP absentee ballot lawsuit falls flat." They know they're not going to win any statewide offices, so they're trying to sow doubt in election integrity. It does seem that that is uh, uh, at least an outcome of what they're doing. I don't know if that's their stated goal, but uh, it is certainly uh, ridiculous that the GOP lawsuit came at a time that we've already had two different elections going on uh, that have already had these rules in place without any fraud without any problems, that some of the candidates that are t- taking the lawsuit were part of those elections, those primaries in those elections. Um, and yet they, uh, they're they now bringing it now that we get to the general election. And we all know why, because uh, it's, it's hard to throw out ballots from your own party, but it's a lot easier to throw out ballots from the other party and assume that they're not voting for you. And that is why they want these objections uh, the ability to object to these absentee ballots instead of relying on the bipartisan boards of elections uh, uh, throughout New York State and their own people to actually be able to spot fraud and administer their own elections. And I think it's actually quite a slap in the face to their own Republican commissioners that they don't trust them. So they're they're taking this lawsuit. Uh, David asked in the chat, will the Electoral Count Reform Act pass the Senate? Certainly seems like it will. Uh, <clears throat> in, I, I think it's a good thing. Uh, <laughs> that's funny, David. Uh, David also put in the chat that he got a GOP mailer telling him to vote absentee. Well, yeah, you know, hypocrisy abounds with, with uh, absentee ballots with the GOP. But uh, um Will the Electoral Count Reform Act? It certainly seems like it will pass the Senate. The biggest difference is it does seem to be a little different than the House version, so they'll have to marry those together uh, and and get it to the president. Um, I think it's a good first step. I think it will do a lot to prevent some of the things that we saw trying to be enacted on January 6th, but uh, I I don't know... um, it's definitely not enough. It's definitely not everything that we need. Uh, to be quite honest, we need the For the People Act. The HR, you know, and, uh, and, and to get that, we need two more Democratic senators that are willing to bypass the filibuster and, and keep the House. And, of course, with Joe Pryden as president, we might have a chance at actually passing some real voting uh, legislation that will protect voters and make sure that people's votes are counted. So that's what I'm hoping for. That's where my hopes lie. All right. I think that's about it. Um, I, uh, uh, well, you know, since the last time I talked to you on Commissioner Carr, I was renominated uh, for uh, elections commissioner. It's now up to the county legislature to put me in. Uh, as many of you know, that uh, there has always been some issues uh, with a Republican controlled county legislature. Uh, would they put in, you know, me as the Democrat, and I, I don't know what they're going to do. I, I hope they will. Uh, but if they don't, there's like, there are protections in New York state law for Democratic commissioners, for any commissioners where a legislature is controlled by one party, but they have to put bipartisan commissioners in there. They, there's protections in place to keep the party in power from putting in a commissioner who's just registered in another party, but not the, um, not the choice of uh, the county committee. So the county committee has nominated me and the legislature has 30 days to act on that nomination. Hopefully they will. Uh, And if they reappoint me, and of course my counterpart, uh, Michelle Sardo, was nominated by her party, as has done 
for most of my time in the legislature in 13, 15, and 17, uh, the county legislature passed resolutions to uh, put both of us in, uh, I'm sorry, it wasn't 13, it was 14, 16, and 18. Um, they passed uh, uh, resolutions to put both of us in place. Although in 18, um, oh, I'm sorry, no, that was, yeah, 14, 16, and 18, I got resolutions uh, <clears throat> from the county legislature to nominate both uh, the Democrat and the Republican uh, choices. In 20, um, the, the, you may remember that they tried to uh, uh, reduce our salaries, and, uh, and that was part of why they were unwilling to nominate me, uh, but the Democratic caucus nominated me, and that's the protection that is in place. So if they don't act within 30 days, the caucus of the part party of the the nominating commissioner gets to put that person in. And then if they don't act within 30 days, then it has to go back to the county committee. Uh, I'm hopeful that uh, the bipartisan legislature will put us both in. Uh, Michelle does a great job. Uh, I, I think we work well together. We have our differences, but we do, uh, you know, run a really nice office and, uh, and, 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 try, and there are great employees there. Um, but if they don't, I hope the Democrats will uh, put us in, put me in anyways. Um, so we'll see what happens in November on that. But in the meantime, I got an election to run, and that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so I don't see anything else in the chat. I think that uh, that's enough for Commissioner in the car today. Check in on Thursday. I'll have a Zoom with Zarni with the town of Pompey uh, candidates. Uh, and uh, so come back uh, for that. This weekend, I'll do a weekly wonk on Senate District 50. Uh, last weekend, I did a weekly wonk on Senate District 48. So check that up on my website, DustinZarney.com. Uh, we, I looked into the Rachel May District, and now next week, I'll look into the John Mannion District. I still have a few more Zoom with Zarnies to drop before the end of the year with the candidates. I'll be uh, talking to Toby Shelley for Sheriff. I'll be talking with Jimmy Monto for 5th District Council. And I'll also be talking with... Uh, the new incoming uh, OCDC chair, Max Ruckdeschel, and Secretary Pernadier. Uh, all of those will be dropping over the next couple of weeks. And also, uh, I'll be talking to Jack Dooling of DeWitt. I, I may actually do two a week in the final couple of weeks of the election to get all of the content out there that I have um, uh, you know, ready to go for you so you can be informed about who you're voting for on November 8th. So thank you very much. And get out there and register to vote. October 14th deadline. If you know somebody who isn't registered, get them registered. Get them updated on their address and so they can get out and vote on November 8th. Bye-bye.